There are so many beautiful fonts that include glyphs. Those are the fancy swashes and flourishes that some fonts include. These are just a few of the examples. In the comments for a recent video, someone asked if I could show how to add them to this I Love Glitter font. I was gonna just find and share a video from another YouTube creator, but the ones I found were before Design Space for Desktop had the kerning feature. This is Hank's Maker Mentor, where I help you learn how to make. In researching for this video, I learned a lot about topography and the proper terms when talking about fonts. As crafters, we use the wrong terms frequently, but as this video is made for crafters, I'm going to continue to use the terms we're familiar with. I am going to introduce you to a term that might be unfamiliar to you, and that is PUA encoded fonts. Knowing this term will help you find fonts that the video applies to. Some fonts are set up in such a way that you can only access the glyphs if you have a professional level software. PUA stands for Private Use Areas. It means that the glyphs and extra characters can be accessed and used with Cricut Design Space and other software. If you want to learn more about fonts, including the proper terms, check out Creative Fabrica's Ultimate Font Guide. If you want a beautiful and educational resource about topography, this one from canva.com has you covered. Any of the things I reference throughout the video, I've linked down in the description below. The most visible difference the kerning feature in Design Space does is adjust the spacing of the letters. Less noticeable, but extremely important other feature that it provides is a semi-permanent weld. Traditionally, weld can only be undone by clicking the undo button, and if you have saved your project, you cannot undo something you have already welded. The kerning feature allows the text to act like it was welded when you click make it, but when you go back to your canvas, you are able to adjust it like you can normal text. This is why you no longer have to weld every script font before you make it, but it makes it more important to remember to weld before doing projects where you have ungrouped the font. I will be using this I Love Glitter font as requested, but the same process applies to other fonts with special characters. This font is available for commercial use here on creativefabrica.com. You only need a personal use license. You can find it on defont.com. As we are approaching Christmas, the creator also has I Love Glitter Miss font where the glyphs are Christmas themed. The very first step is to download the font and install it on your computer. If you don't know how to do this, I'm linking this video from DIY Alex up above as well as in the comments. Next, you'll insert a text box here in Design Space. It defaults to the Cricut Sans font. I'm going to search for the I Love Glitter font and select that. Type in your text. This is what mine looks like with the standard characters at the standard 72 font size. I'm showing this to you on a Windows computer. The steps are the same on a Mac. The only difference is where you will find your installed fonts. The default on a Mac is font book. The Windows default is character map. This is what character map looks like. Mine was in the folder in my start menu called Windows Accessories. Character map works, but you can't make it any bigger. So I'm gonna show you one option here, and then I'm gonna show you a way that's much easier on your eyes. I already have it selected for the I Love Glitter font. If it's not already on the font you want, you'll use this drop down menu. There's alternative characters and glyphs in a few different places. For the I Love Glitter font, there's a few that are here in punctuation. If you click on it, it'll enlarge it just a little bit. The fastest way I found to get to the rest is here in the search bar to type private use. I just scroll down and you'll see that there are a lot more. Once you've found the one you want, you'll go ahead and double click it and it'll show up here in the characters to copy. You'll go ahead and click the copy button and then you'll come back into design space. Double click on part of the stroke of your text to reopen your text box. Delete what you don't want. Just go ahead and do control V. Here in my text box, you'll see that there is no glyph. It will either not show up or it will show up as an odd symbol because the font here does not have that glyph. Make sure you're looking at your canvas to see if it went where you want. As you can see, the character map is 
lots of tiny things. It's really hard to tell and there's an easier way. So I'm going to show you that option. I downloaded an application called Main Type to do this based off of the recommendation of DIY Alex. And I'm linking her video where she recommends it as well as her channel. It's a free application with paid additional features. I don't anticipate ever needing to pay for it, so I just go ahead and click that I want to use the free version. Here in the top right, I'm going to type in I love glitter. I've changed my font size to 72 for this video, but you can change it to whatever size works best for you. It starts with the basic Latin portion. It does include some of the glyphs, these flourishes, this single heart. When you click and hold on a character, it will expand and the bottom left corner will show you how to type it without needing to copy and paste it. Typing an underscore, they call it a low line, will get you this glyph. If you come up to the menu and select private use area, you'll find even more. I'm going to use this E that's turned into a heart as the example that we're going to do for this one. Once you've selected it, it'll show up in a blue box and you can either right click and select copy to clipboard or you can use your keyboard shortcuts of control C, control V. Then I'm going to go back into design space and it's the same idea. I'm going to delete the old E and I'm going to insert using control V at least on the desktop, when you are inserting these, right-clicking paste is grayed out, so you will need to use those shortcuts on your keyboard. Now a few troubleshooting tips. If things aren't lining up the way you want, the swoosh and the A aren't quite the way I'd like them, if you select the text and then come up here to ungroup, it'll make each of your letters an individual piece of the design. I'm going to take all of the letters in Alley, and I'm going to group them together just so I don't mess them up. I'm going to zoom way in. And I'm going to just adjust it so it's lined up the way I want. After you do this, you do need to make sure that you weld it before you do your final design. If you're not 100% sure that this is exactly how you want it, I suggest grouping it now. Because when you go to make it, if you haven't welded it or attached it, they're going to show up in all sorts of crazy places and it'll remind you that you haven't done that. If you attach it but you haven't welded it, when you go to cut it, sections of letters are double cut because it's following the entire line of each letter. Which is why I like to group it to remind myself that once I've got it all situated, I need to weld it. Troubleshooting tip number two, I'm using Noah and Allie before I adjusted it. It's just one solid text block. When I go to click make it, if I zoom in, you can see that the center of the E has been filled in. You might recognize this from when you hit weld and the same thing happens on your canvas. This is because design space is confused about what amount of overlap there is and whether or not that should be filled in. It happens a lot more with small designs. You have a few different options of how to fix it. The fastest one, if you're just trying to get a project taken care of, is to adjust the letter spacing. So if you come up here to letter spacing, click up once, that spaces it out enough that design space is no longer confused and it's not filling in the center of my E. So these are now all spaced out just a little bit, depending on your font, depends on whether or not this is a good choice. Another option is to make a note of what size your design is. We'll just remember 0.889 for my height. And we're gonna take it and we're going to adjust my height to 20. And it's going to gripe and say it's too big. Before I do anything else, I'm just gonna go ahead and click weld and then reselect that text. And in my height, I'm gonna do 0.889. When I go to click make it, my E is not filled in. When you make it a lot larger, design space gets less confused. You can weld it and then size it back down. This does run you into the same thing of needing to make sure that everything is exactly how you want it before you click weld. Last one is to do the same thing as the first troubleshooting tip where you will just ungroup it and manually move the letter or letters that you need to to prevent any overlap. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below in the comments. I am happy to do my best to help. 
Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.